faithful. This is just to let you know there's more than one way that you can check in on the different types of degree of fuckery we get into. You can go to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or just watch us on YouTube or Rumble. Don't forget to like, share, and comment where you can, or just leave five stars on Apple Podcasts. We, we, we thrive on things like absolution from our audience. But see if we can get this steamrolled into something big. We're depending on you. Thank you for watching. Now let us begin. Oh, wait. Okay, go ahead. Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today on Nerd Sports, we're going to talk about what everybody's talking about right now is slap fighting, apparently. I don't... I've I've been interested in slap fighting. I've been watching, you know, them smack people around and everything like that. It's a very interesting sport. Uh it actually started probably in about two thousand I think uh ten. And it didn't you, and it didn't achieve and it didn't achieve mainstream like attention until this past week when uh Will Smith smacked the taste out of Chris Rock's mouth. That's what it was? Yeah. I thought everybody was finally into my sport that I actually watch constantly, and I wish I could talk about, but, but nobody's interested in it. Uh, I feel... And apparently Will Smith won that fight because they gave him an Oscar later in the evening. Oh. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what's funny about that whole situation? And it's not in the media or anything, is someone was filming, like, the after effect of that and everything like that. Chris yeah. Rock went over to Jada and started talking to her, Will, and everything, and they <laughs> they pretty much. Uh, <sighs> hey, it, you know what it, we it did it not address? Like a, it seemed like an Andy Kaufman type feel, deal. It did, but you know we're not addressing, and, and I get to finally address the elephant in the room, ladies and gentlemen. Angry faithful, you are witnessing. A historical milestone in the history of not only Angry Me production, but nerd sports. This is episode fucking 50. I know. Like weird, 50. isn't it? We've been at this. This show is almost damn near a year old. Yeah, actually, it's it, it, it's, it's a, it's a week our, shy it, because it's, it, it's, this, it's our this anniversary. Yeah. Well, this this theoretically, Do I this, this should be episode 50. You get me flowers, I swear to God. Um, <laughs> you know, people are going to egg me on. I was like, get them flowers. <laughs> I have a film crew and everything. <laughs> I should do it. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, I'm thinking about doing this now. I mean, I would take the beating. I know I'm going to get a beating. I would take the beating. You know that you know that situations where you know you when you're a kid and everything you know you're gonna end up getting a beating. I would or something take like the that. time, and I would take I, I would take the hit. It would be I one would, of those moments no. that would take the hit. I would take the time to get as many clone numbers as humanly possible and flood your phone for the period of 24 hours, maybe not consecutively, but I would blow your phone up with as many dick pics as I could find. I wouldn't be upset. I would be judgmental too. It's like, hey, where'd you get this one out? This is this is kind of a weird one. Or right. no, hey, they, you, you forget who you're talking to. I mean, it's one of those things. It's like I'm filling your thing with dick pics. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I legitimately seen more dicks than most porn stars. That's gay porn stars. one of those things you know you work corrections you see a lot of dick a lot of dick it's like a sea of dicks some of them are small wells and small fishes other times it's the big well and you're impressed and slightly slightly sad because you don't have something like that nope nope here we go there we go <laughs> I got it hold on Dude, do you have your phone near you? I know you do. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah. Uh, oh. Sure. My phone's all wet and everything. I'm prepared. Oh my god. <sighs> uh, wait for it. Here, it, it's it's inbound. Hold on. Wait, please. I'm waiting. There's not even a text thingy for it. So weird. But my whole my whole fucking feed, all it is is Will Smith and um, it's like. Will Smith, Chris Walk, Smack of the Century, blah, blah, bullshit. Oscars, 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 blah, blah, blah. I even forgot their Oscars were around. One of those things. But anyways. Okay, now. Are you sending the stuff and I'm waiting on it? There you go. Okay. There's dick pick number one. <laughs> Andy Dick. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, uh, it, it had far off topic. Uh, you know, you realize someone that you like, you, you see and you think you want to hang out with and you actually see them on a, on, uh, on podcasts because podcasts, you actually get to meet the real person sometimes. And yeah. you just realize, no, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to hang out with that person anymore. I don't. I don't think that person would be a good person to hang out with. T.J. Miller, yeah. he was really? on Drinking Bowls today. He just sounds like too over the top all the time. Really? Yeah. It, it, it's one of those weird things, but you know, I would say I don't. Like, hey, how's it going? My five seconds is up. I'm gonna have to go. Just a one of those weird things. Anyways, sports news. Sports what news. What okay. I'm not going to start with baseball right now. Um, just because I want to, I want to give some of our listening audience who enjoy the March Madness their uh, time in the spotlight. See, this is me being magnanimous and not wanting to make the basketball lovers in the world out there feel like the bastardized rat children. Or is it, well, just the bastardized stepchildren, the redheaded ones, no less. Um, Sorry. Yeah. So here we go. The Cinderella, the number 15 ranked St. Peter uh, University uh, Peacocks finally lost. They were upset. And I say they were upset because, well, I wanted them to go all the way anyway. They were knocked off by number eight, North Carolina, uh, 49 to 69. So their run's over. Um, let me see here. Um, Kansas beat Miami. Duke beat Arkansas. And Villanova beat Houston. Which I'm not upset at all that a Houston area team is out of championship contention. And that sounds really shitty of me because, well, I'm going to be living in the Houston area soon. We both, mm. we both may. I may, yeah. I haven't got any kind of yay or nay yet. I so know. the final four for the men's is number two Villanova versus number one Kansas, and number eight North Carolina versus number two seed Duke. Those are going to be, yeah, those are going to be some relatively entertaining games, I think. Um, on the women's side. Um, number one, Louisville knocked off number three, Michigan and the number two, UConn lady Huskies, uh, beat number one seed NC state 91, 87. So it's going to be Louisville versus South Carolina. Two number one seeds. Oh, okay. Um, and UConn versus number one, Stanford. So that's going to be kind of cool. Um, 
there are let me see because every year they have like all right you know pick your bracket and you basically wage your money whether you know you don't necessarily wage your money uh i mean you obviously got pools of people that you know like they do office pools for the tournament and the person that gets the most picks right or they get they pick the cha- the eventual champion they win a certain amount of money but there's this um uh, you submit your bracket, right? And if you pick your bracket 100% accurately, I think it's like a million dollar prize or something like that, right? Um, <laughs> there is a total of 5.53% of the women's uh, basketball, you know, the women's final four tournament. Uh, March Madness, five point five three percent of their of their brackets that were submitted are still accurate. On the men's side, point zero eight eight percent picked the four correctly. <laughs> That's you know a lot of people were going like, oh yeah, Kentucky's going to go deep, and then Kentucky gets knocked out first round by St. Peter. <laughs> you know? Oh wow! So. But I mean, these are going to be decent games. Um, so, uh, yeah, I may tune in for those. Uh, or I just may like just catch the highlights on Sports Center. You know, one of the rare occasions that I watch Sports Center anymore. Um, Here's some but, interesting NFL uh, NFL news. Well, we can get to the NFL at the end. Yeah, because this is something short. I just have a lot of questions. It's one of those things I find something and I and I have questions about it. Not Go because ahead, you know because if it's anything like your penis, it's short and it will soon disappear because of the cool breeze. So go ahead. There is a cool breeze. Anyways. Well you better ask it before it shrivels up and you turn into a woman. Yeah, but I can actually dominate <laughs> in some sports though. Do what? I can dominate in some sports though. Anyways, uh, three teams voted against the NFL new overtime Women's rules. Women's ski ball? Probably. Uh, Anyways, I'm sorry. Three teams voted against the NFL's new overtime rule, including one that played in the Super Bowl LV1. That would be 51. 51. Was that the recent one? No. I think it was last year's or a year before last, whenever Tampa Bay won it. No, okay. Uh, three teams that voted against was Bengals, Vikings, and Dolphins. According to Sports Illustrated, the Bengals and Vikings have both been involved in overtime playoff games over the past three years, so it is notable that they would vote against it. Thanks to the new overtime rule, both teams will now be granted at least one possession for uh, any pos- uh, postseason game. That goes to overtime. The new rules doesn't apply to regular season games. Under the old rule, a touchdown score by the team that has uh, has the ball first in overtime would end the game. But with the new rule, the second team will get a chance to pos- uh, possess the ball, even if the first team scored a touchdown. I'm all for that, you know. And I'm surprised, you know. In fifty Super Bowl fifty one, what's the last one that was played? No, it wasn't. Anyways, I digress. So, no, because 56, no, that's 56. LV1 is 56. So, 56 is the one that was just played. Anyways. Um, I'm surprised that the Bengals voted against that rule. And here's why. Because all of their overtime victories during this past postseason were on a second possession. Yeah, that's that's what it's saying right now. That, that's, that that's, it's that's surprising that the Vikings would even do that. Well, the Vikings, yeah, no, I'm, I'm talking about the Bengals. Oh. oh okay, Bengals, yeah, the Bengals, yeah, all, it's uh, surprising, would have voted against the new rule if only because the team, oh, their team's history since their uh, expression season in 1968, the Bengals have never scored an offensive touchdown in overtime. Right. Uh, it's just 
It's just weird to me. But, yeah. Um, moving into baseball, uh, man, I'm excited. I finally got my digital tickets uh, from MLB for the April 16th game uh, here in or, or well here in Texas for for the Rangers. Um, because uh, on Cyber Mon- or Black yeah Cyber Monday, they had um, they had a Cyber Monday sale where you could get game tickets for ten dollars a seat, right? Mm-hmm. And so I, I I got some fairly decent seats. I mean they're in the upper level, but I really don't care. Um, they're non obstructed view seats, uh, which as you can probably remember was my biggest gripe about the new ball field down in Arlington. Um, but, uh, and I was kind of worried about it for a while there because when the CBA was still, you know, the, the negotiations for new CBA were still going on. I was, I was kind of worried that, that there wasn't going to be a game for me to go watch with my kids, but I got the tickets today. So I'll get to see Shoei Otani and Mike Trout play. And bonus bonus is that with the opening day being pushed back to April 7th, um that's basically was that on your end or mine that's my end oh um that's basically almost like an opening series um so why was i thinking april 7th it's not the first game in the season right no it's not um schedule opening day is actually um yeah, April 7th, and then, uh, let me see here. No, it's not opening series. So they basically, uh, I think, well, regardless, I, I get to go see, I get to go take my kids to go see a ball game. Um they're in the first month of the season, so uh, there's that. Um, it's going to be a late night for the boys because the game is a it's a, it's a night it's a it, it's a like a six o'clock first pitch or six ten first pitch, and uh, or it's a seven o'clock. I can't remember. Anyways, it's like anyways it's, it's a night game. So by the time we get out of the ballpark, it's going to be like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And then we've got the hour and a half, two hour drive to get back to, you know, get back up here. So I'm just kind of like, eh, I don't know. I may see about trying to get like a hotel room or something for the night. I <laughs> just so I hate, you know, just so I don't have to deal with traffic and then getting everybody back at the foul late, you know, that kind of a deal. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, so. Yeah, spring training's and going in full bloom. Um, in about a week and a half, uh, this you know uh, teams are yeah, I mean, teams are going to start breaking camp and they're going to start going to their prospective cities to uh, open the season. Um, is this Red like Sox, uh, the Red is this Sox like are, a football to where? Well, yeah, uh, I mean, they have a, more or less, like I have a preseason, then they yeah. actually have the season. Okay, yeah, well, spring training's it's it's a, it's it's a two front thing one. They they start weeding through the non roster invitees and they start you know weeding through the people that have been invited to camp, um, figuring out who's going to make the twenty five man roster. Which interestingly enough, I think for the, like the first month or month and a half of the season, because of the uh, the shortened spring training schedule, um, the rosters are going to be expanded to twenty eight men. So um, it's going to be interesting to see who makes those twenty eight man rosters, who's going to go home. Um, I mean, the teams, teams are going to know pretty much who their starters are going to be, um, as far as position players are going to be concerned, um, whether it be because they signed free agents to, you know, contracts for that position or what have you. Um, the only thing really at this point that we're fleshing out is who's going to go to double A, who's going to go to triple A, um, who's going to go back to single A ball, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, you know, because when, because I believe that the minor league season starts, I think maybe next month. I cannot remember. 
Um, are you trying to figure out the actual season when it starts? Well, no, for minor league. Um, beat game schedules here. Um, oh, April 5th. So, yeah. Um, organization. Nope. We're going to go class thing. Triple A? Nope. Um, where's that a double A team? Texas League. There we go. All right. So, like, for the Texas League, which includes teams like Frisco, Tulsa, um, Wichita, San Antonio, Corpus Christi, Midland, uh, Northwest Arkansas, Springfield, and uh, Amarillo, um, their season starts on April 8th. So, uh, the closest team to us is not a Texas League team. It's actually uh, it's a Triple A team for the Dodgers. It's the uh, Oklahoma City Brick, uh, Oklahoma City Dodgers. Uh-huh. They play in the Bricktown Stadium. But we've got a team in Amarillo called the Sod Poodles. They, uh, yes, the Sod Poodles. I don't know it, <laughs> that's, that's a it's basically name. a prairie dog, right? Um, they're they're a double A affiliate of the Arizona Diamondbacks. So, um, my oldest son Chauncey he likes to attend their games. I'm going to go try to before I before I make, uh, move down there to 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 the Lake Jackson area. Uh, I'm going to try to make a take like a weekend trip or something like that to head out to Amarillo and uh, spend the night with my kid, go catch a ball game, you know, that kind of a thing. That'd um, be cool. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, I just want to kind of one, cause he owns a house out there and I have yet to see his new house. Uh, I just, I want to check out his digs. You know, I want to meet his girlfriend for the first time. Everybody else in the family has met his girlfriend except for me because I was working that day. But, yeah. um, Anyway, so, uh, yeah, I, minor league ball. If you have never had a chance to go see a minor league baseball game, I would highly, highly, highly suggest doing it. Um, it it's it's the, the 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 tickets are, oh god, the the tickets are cheap. Um, let me let me pull with the side pools. The well, it's one are. of those things that if you're actually interested in a sport, you, you want to check it out no matter what it is. Yeah. So, like for example, unless it's like one of those horrible, horrible, horrible type deals. Yeah. So, like, say for example, if I wanted to take May and uh, go see a because, t- uh, like, it's sitting there telling me tickets can go anywhere from six to twenty dollars, right? Mm-hmm. And let's just say, uh, let's do. Because I, I even, uh, there's there's people that like get so into football, they have to go to the uh, high school teen sports and everything. Right. And I'm like, that's a lot of work. Yeah, but you know, at the same time, you're just kind of like, eh. yeah. Um, okay, so for like the most expensive seat at uh, Hodgetown, which I guess is the name of the stadium there in Amarillo, uh, twenty dollars hmm. for a single game ticket, and I'm like, okay, I'm completely i mean like they've even got lawn seats in the outfield military and first responders six dollars oh nice yeah um adult seating six dollars you just bring a lawn chair you know and sit out there and if a home run lands out there it's basically a scrum to catch the ball you know um i mean it, it just it looks it looks cool. I mean, and they've got one. It's called standing room only, six dollars. But those are in the outfield, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you don't really start seeing that ratcheted up. Uh, 
Oh, that is that's cool. Eighteen dollars. Yeah. Pfft. Oh, I am so totally going. To, I'm I'm so totally doing this. So Chauncey, if you're listening, just kind of be prepared. Uh, probably the f- first maybe week or two. You know, like the first weekend that I don't have your brothers uh, in May. I'm gonna come out and uh, on a Saturday. So just be prepared for me to spend the night on a Saturday. So, anyways, um, but all that being said, um, minor league games are they're just family, fun, you know, family friendly. Uh, a lot of the minor league owners, I mean, they put on great promotions. Uh, yeah, you know, so I mean, do they do and, like and, and, weird promotions? Yeah, I mean they'll they'll do like weird promotions, like they'll have dollar hot dog night or something like that, or you know they'll have like themed nights where you get. I, I've seen some promotions, like if you wear a Hawaiian shirt to the game, uh, you your your ticket is like seventy five percent off or something like that, or you know, it, it's just it's crazy. I mean, just the if if Major League Baseball hadn't come to a cba agreement in time the minors were still going to play yeah minor league baseball would have gotten a huge economical shot in the arm just because you're going to go out there and you're going to see a really great product you know and you, you got teams like the savannah bananas that they're they're savannah like dude, the savannah bananas <laughs> dude it, it, they've got a tiktok account go check them out and dude they're they're hilarious oh no i've seen that it came on my feed uh one time and they're like do yeah like revi- that yeah okay now yeah like now their batters come yeah. out and they, they their batters as they're walking up to 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 the uh to the batter's box like when some of them keep microphones in their back pockets and they like do wrestling intros, you know, or their or, pitcher or they will wear like a banana suit. Tricks. Yeah. And I've seen one where they're like, uh, in, uh, kilts. Yeah. 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 That, I, I've and, seen and see, that. These, yeah. these are, these, these are kids that have been drafted at a high school or they're trying to like, they call them journeymen. They're, 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 they're kind of just journeying, you know, just going through the ranks, trying to trying to make their way to the show. There are some guys that are career minor leaguers, and they're just there playing because they love the game. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like uh, what would he, uh, what, what a uh, Harlem Glow Trotters. Yeah, but the Harlem Glow Trotter games are always fixed. Well, yeah, but but you still have the 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 a bit of fun I mean these guys like that yeah I mean these kids are out there having fun and they're out there learning I mean they're they're it's for them it's about getting to that next level versus well I'm just out here collecting a huge contract and yeah I'm hurt oh I don't want to tank that you know I'm going to tank this play because yeah I don't want to injure myself I mean these kids are out there trying to show hustle. They're trying to show that they can be depended upon, they can come through in the clutch. I mean they're trying to show what they can bring to that particular, you know, ball club that they're trying to make. And um you know, it's just fun. Um I mean, we used to have a, a minor league team here in Wichita Falls years ago. I mean, we're talking like maybe 40 years ago, 30 40 years ago. And then, of course, like all the other sports teams that come into the city, you know, the either the city government chases them away or the uh, the people who live here don't know how to act. And, you know, instead of, you know, going to these games and, and showing support for the local teams, they just kind of sit at home or they hit the bars or, you know, they just basically stop giving a shit after the first year of novelty wears off you know and it's like and then they want to sit there and act all self-righteous and indignant and bitch about how there's nothing to do in this town yeah you know, so. well it's the same thing it's like i had a uh captain uh yeah it was actually captain cook uh his last name was cook and he mm-hmm. made captain uh in uh as a correctional officer now he's like major cook anyways uh sorry <laughs> i'm laughing with you but they had a they have a like a minor league football team here in town yeah. i guess 
and he he played for them for uh until he left to go to a he was he was avid in it he was actually really good in it. yeah but it was one of it's one of those things that a lot of stuff doesn't like get the praise enough it's like uh i hate to say this it's like uh a lot of the bars in town you you you'd think a lot of them was like, oh, they make a lot of money. It's like they mostly make their money. It's on the weekends and depending on what bar it is and where it's at. Like Toby's gets a lot of uh, uh, play because it's right next to the college. It's really close to there. Uh, back in the day, it was Graham Central Station. Everybody went to. But it. But every time I go to uh, any kind of bar, I don't go to bars anymore unless mm-hmm. I'm doing like interviews or something like that. Uh, and it's it's really sad that when you go to them, you just see the same thing. It's like, oh, you can go pick up a woman at a bar. I was like, why the fuck would you want to do that? I mean... You're breaking up their inhibition right there, and when it's probably not going to last. Right. And if it is, I, I it's so many horror stories and everything. So I, I met her at a bar, and after like six to seven months, they're like, ah, I'm through. It's horrible. I don't know why. I was like, well, you met her at a bar. <laughs> Dude, you know how many horror stories start and end with, oh, I met her at a bar. I just thought she was the one. Or at a strip club. <laughs> right. Yes. Like, I met her at a strip club. Okay. Was she patroning the strip club or was she working that night? Well, she was dancing. So you, 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 okay. We're just, we're just going to leave that right there. Cause it's already tied up with a nice bow on it for you. Like now, like the oh, what, no, what's no, really said. What's that's really said is the scre- uh, strip clubs here. If they're dating someone, they're basically almost dating the dealer, and it's and it's so fucking sad, and it, it's like textbook. Okay, it's so like, aside from the stereotype daddy <clears throat> issue thing, right? Yeah, that's because, why I just well, uh, date. All right, early. now to be fair, all right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing but they're fire the, the, women. They the, uh, because you know very rarely anymore will you find a stripper or an exotic dancer just call them what they are um strippers very rarely will you find them without an a premium snapchat b a uh only friends account or c a reddit a reddit account right you know, and 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 they, they uh, well, and their Twitter too. Twitter, yes, Twitter, Reddit, or uh, uh, and Snapchat. I just said premium Snapchat. Now the ones who give it away for free, oh, they don't pre- care. Yeah, They'll just put it on. Pre- well, they won't put it on their. They won't put it on regular Snapchat. And the reason why they won't do that is because if somebody reports them, then Snapchat will actually crack down on them. So as opposed to, hey, I've got a premium Snapchat. Here's my Cash App. You know, and they'll you know you pay them whatever you give them your snapchat username what they'll do is they'll add you to a list and then you know they'll say okay just send a request to this name because they'll usually have two different accounts right but um anyway so they'll either have a premium snap they'll have a twitter a reddit or an only friends account oscar you know oscar foxtrot right yeah so <sighs> and what do they call themselves they they actually call themselves, wait for it, sex workers. It's like okay, well, sex workers have rights too. Like okay, fine. Well, you know. okay, it, and, and, and it's not to say because I mean there are people out there that because you know you've got your stereotypical, uh, uh you got your stereotype stripper, right? Yeah, daddy issues. You know they're usually pierced out to next day you know next week uh, they, they've got or heavily drug tattooed. problems you know heavily tattooed 
I don't, I have met some people that had done that at least for a period of time, but then got away, got away from that lifestyle. Now, there are also people that I know that actively do that, that do it just for the enjoyment. And it's not that they've got self-esteem issues or daddy issues or anything like that. Yes, heavily tattooed, fine, whatever. I have tattoos. You have tattoos. You've got tattoos, right? Yeah, you've got Mm -hmm. tattoos. So, you know, unlike this whole Christians against tattoos, you know, like, well, you know, tattooed parents are nine times more likely to beat their children. Like, well, you know what? Just go castrate yourself because that was just pure and utter stupidity. Um, How did we get on the subject of strippers again? I have no idea. I don't either. This is what did what did I say that ended up? I just ended up. I think you were. Say, contemplating, I made a joke. I think you were. Comp- I think you were contemplating for episode <laughs> number fifty one's intro, the interesting and potentially new Olympic sport of pole dancing. Actually, I have a lot of information on pole dancing, and it didn't start with women. The initial the initial thing on pole dancing was actually men doing it, but they were doing it for acrobatic stuff and everything like that. And it wasn't until like the nineties when women actually started using a pole to dance around. Okay. I got bored one day. I get bored, you know hey. I, I get bored and I do research. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a pure and unadulterated example of what happens if you properly allocate your time and resources. We should have flying fucking cars right now. We, sh- we should have transporter technology. We should be breaking the light barrier. We should have starships zooming in and out of our solar system at warp speed. But instead, we have people like Mr. David Dickerman who get bored. And instead of doing research to benefit mankind... And the advancement of 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 humankind into the cosmos. What does he do? He researches the history of pole dancing. Yeah, it was pretty really Shut up, dude. I also <laughs> research how how it's possible to do uh warp speed travel and stuff. Really? So it had nothing to do with the folding of time and space and creating a, a stable, viable wormhole as opposed to physically trying to fast or travel faster than the speed of light. Because without the use of inertial in, inertia dampeners, any, the, the, you're not going to, the, the closer you get to the actual threshold, you would basically spaghettify yourself against the back bulkhead door. Or well, b- b- back bulkhead. Well, actually the video that I saw, and it's supposed to be, this is the nerd about portion to, of our show. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's like, 10 to 12 years that we might actually have it didn't nasa Depending. just like have a press conference where they 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 unveiled their uh warp speed computer project. yeah their their warp their their warp speed ship yeah uh they have a design they don't have yeah. it actually completed but no uh it's basically from what i gather it's creating a like 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 how an arrow does. Yeah. Uh, this is for people that actually don't know this and surprised that we actually do know this. Uh, the way warp speed is technically supposed to, uh, it's like an arrow. You're you're basically crushing the front end and creating a. Uh, shield like dampening over the whole thing and it slips through in a small The word that he's looking now. for is exactly that it's a slipstream. Yeah. Because they're going off of the premise that dark energy, which is the energy that we don't see, which is the space in between stars. Basically, antimatter. Is a ma- well, it's well, no, not antimatter. Knows. Not well, antimatter. What well, there's, everybody there's, else there's, saying that says there's dark ma- uh, No, not dark energy, dark matter. That's okay, you have dark what dark matter. matter is. It's antimatter. No, it's not. No, yeah. it's not. No, it's not. I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Anyway, so this dark is... matter. They're theorizing that dark matter is 
it, it, it'll have properties and behaves the same way that an oxygen environment would as it relates to travel through. Yes, while we do know that space is a vacuum, in order to obtain speeds that would allow us to get near or past the speed of light, which I do believe that Albert Einstein was wrong when he created his relative, uh, theory of relativity. Oh, there is a difference. I didn't. Hey, look at I that. Watched, Johnny no, well, knows I watched something. this one video. I watched See, this I'm one not video. See, I'm thing. just not all it athleticism and good looks. Okay. I actually do use my brain for something besides keeping my ears apart. I know, shocking as that may be to you and our general listening audience, nonetheless, I do use my brain. Well, I, this and not is the one I that's between know. my legs. I'm talking about the one that's above my head, connected to that lump, where the, the one that's contained inside the lump three feet above my ass. Yeah, that one. I didn't know antimatter is also produced by lightning and cosmic rays. Mm -hmm. I I watched this. I watched this one. What got me on this? And this, this is this is the thing about researching stuff yourself, which um, I'm always for, and not speculating on what's actually. I mean, we had a debate. Yeah, I. I was like, no, we got to stop this right now. Pause the brakes. Let's go, tit fucker. Let's see what we got. And I was wrong. But I did. I, I ended up doing the research. We're, we're not going to go out and go to a Connex box and see who's right on that. We figured it out mm-hmm. verbally and intellectually. Mm-hmm. Unlike what some people do nowadays. No, you mean like we just did, right? Yeah. Yeah, see? Okay. Um, no, see, and it irritated my ex-wife to no end. Like I could watch something one time and I would retain a ton of information from it. Right. Yeah. I watched the history (laughs) channel. I watched the science channel. I love the science channel. Um, one of my favorite, I got into, I got into, uh, medical channel a lot. I I always wanted to be a doctor, but I just, it just didn't. It wasn't in the cards for me. I do. I I, I know a lot of medical stuff. This reason see, why. For the, yeah. See, for the longest time, everybody was telling me that I should have been a nurse. And I'm like, my profession used to be putting holes in people. Yeah. Well, I get that a lot of us make transitions over to the <laughs> medical field to patch those holes up. I, I have a very historically have had a very low tolerance for bullshit yeah that's what a lot of them are you know i mean so jason doing emt stuff and everything like that uh, now he's going to be a nurse he's literally going after the people that he detests he's actually going to become something that he detests yeah so you either die young enough to be the hero or you live long enough to become the villain is that one yeah, of those situations? I, yeah it's yeah. one of those situations yeah so but hey, you know, hey Jason, if you're going to go become a nurse, man, remember your roots, remember where you came from, and if you have any military experience, why don't want you just go ahead and treat it like you're a former enlisted officer? Uh, he worked greenside. Okay. Okay. He was a corpsman. All right. Well, greenside. then at that po- at that point, he, he should know then. Yeah. Some of the best officers were the ones that used to be enlisted men. If you're going to go out there and you're going to become a nurse and you're going to work your way up to those ranks, do exactly that. Remember where you came from and trust the people that are around you. Anyways, digressing. We're going to move on to something else here. Um, or we're not digressing and moving on. We're just digressing. So, but I one of my favorite series on the Science Channel, which I have like the access to uh, through my Discovery Plus. Mm-hmm. That is a great streaming service, by the way. Um, how the universe works and it's narrated by Mike Rowe. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love that. Like just listening to it and just kind of taking that information in. And now is that any information that I could put to use in a practical everyday, you know, setting? No, but is it cool to know? Absolutely. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut until I figured out how much damn math was involved. And I fucking suck at math. I really do. I mean, in all transparency, I graduated high school by the skin of my teeth, and that was because I had to bust my ass the last six weeks because I was dicking around too much, and I started failing, and my recruiter came to me and said, hey, look, if you miss your ship date because you got to take summer school, 
you lose everything that you signed up for and you'll become whatever the army wants you to be. And I was like, Oh no, that's not going to work for me. So I, I, I hammered down and I doubled down on everything that last six weeks. I graduated by the skin of my teeth and that included algebra one. So, you know, I didn't get to take geometry or trigonometry or calculus or, you know, anything like that because I was like, I'm going to join the army. No, what the hell I need math for only had if I had known what I know now, I could go back in time and kick my own ass and tell myself, hey, look, do your fucking schoolwork and worry about being popular after you become an adult because you'll realize that it's all overrated anyway. But What's um, really sad is uh, my way of studying is I, I'm a crammer. I'm one of those crammers. I can't. I didn't even do that. I mean, I had to cram the last six weeks. If I'd have just applied myself, God, I've just become every fucking teacher that I have ever encountered in my entire scholastic career. If I'd have just applied myself from day one, dude, I'd have had good grades, man. I I, I would have, I, I probably could have, you know. That was actually, another thing people kept on uh, asking me to do is uh, become a teacher. And I was like, N- no. But yeah, uh, see, it was it, it, a lot of a lot of my friends were trying to get uh, learn some stuff, and I would just pick it up so fast. It, uh, yeah, and so but that's I would something forget, I wanted to do. Forget something, I would, I would forget it right after I, I learned it. Sometimes, unless it yeah. was like something I was really interested in. Yeah, and see, that's something that that I was really interested in doing. You know, after I got out, um, was becoming a history teacher because I love history. Love it. Specifically World War II, European theater, you know, some Pacific stuff. But I loved, I mean, I still, I say loved, I love history. Like, I could watch the History Channel, or I could watch documentaries about things, or read military history books, and I could actually formulate what the battle battlefield looked like in my head. Like, you know, those maps, you know, that you see. I could, I could see things happening. You know, I could piece it together timeline-wise as it's happening in the book and know where each unit's going to be and what their, what their next moves are going to be, you know, based on that. But, and I, I thought, okay, I could be a history teacher and and this would be great, you know, but again, it goes back to me fucking around in high school too much and not getting the grades that I needed in order to be able to do things like get scholarships or apply for grants or, you know things of that Why nature don't you because, use your GI Bill? Uh, because that ha- that had a ten year shelf life, and that sh- that 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 uh, that that ship sailed a long time ago. Hmm. Now I think that there's still the Hazelwood Act. Yeah, you can might still be use able- the Hazelwood Act, but you have to yeah. uh, like exhaust your GI Bill. You might actually still be able to use it. Yeah, I'll check into it. I'm not sure, but. Um, you know, it, I, I don't, I mean, I I understand the need for a degree in some, you know, a lot of jobs require them now. Um, you can use it for a pilot's license too. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm 44. I'm going to be 45 this year. And I'm not saying that that's the end of life at all. You know, I mean, you and I are trying to move into a career field where, like, it requires a bachelor's degree or four years of military experience, right? Yeah. So, you know, so it, I, I understand the need for the degrees, but, you know, it, I, I, I kind of always was part of that whole mentality that college educations were just pushed way too hard. People go in there and they get these degrees for these fields that they're not even practicing in. Um, You know, like somebody will go to an accounting or go to school for accounting or they'll go to school for education or something like that. And they end up not even getting a job in that field. And it's like, no, it's even, it's even yeah, I mean, worse when it's like uh, I, the 
the well i had one that a person got a degree in philosophy another one i just seen recently was norse uh religion i'm like why what is the point? Degree, degree we literally place. had a lieutenant in our battalion who got a degree in um arts like yeah liberal arts liber- no no the arts oh not okay. liberal arts but like fucking basket weaving yeah and and the reason why how how this and, and how it came about we were we were giving him shit like we some of the other officers were giving him shit about getting a degree in basket weaving and we were like that's not a thing is it and he was like yeah it is i went to school to become an art teacher and we were like what the fuck are you doing in an infantry unit <laughs> it was like holy shit you know talk about round peg square hole or you know, i was like fuck dude the hell is that all about you know yeah but, you, what well what it would explain to me was all you have to be an actual uh officer is you have to just be you just have to have a degree in something you have to have at least yeah, you have to have a degree, or a but you have to go through the application process and you have to be vetted you have to be um basically interviewed um a friend of mine who is now i think he's either a captain or a major in the air force mm-hmm. um air force reserve he's got a degree from the seminary he's an he's an he's an ordained baptist minister and he is a chaplain in the air force reserve he tried to get with the other act he tried to go army i think i think he tried to go navy also um and he ended up having to go to the air force reserve to get his commission and i'm like oh and i remember him talking about it it was such a long application process like there were i think there were interviews involved and and it was just all kinds you know it's you know what's really sad though they used to have like pilot programs to where uh i was like andy stump uh stump you know who he is right yeah you know he uh retired as a lieutenant no yeah he was he retired as a uh well our our star uh captain navy lieutenant oh Okay. You know what his college degree was? Mm-mm. Not a damn thing. <laughs> they had a program to where uh to keep people uh keep people in. Basically if uh it, uh it's like uh say you're uh a chief master star- sergeant and they wanted to keep you in because you're very good at your job and you very- they make you a warrant officer or they they make you a uh just to keep you in along your tenure right they had those programs and everything because he couldn't get he couldn't get chief petty officer so he went to the other line he's like hey what about this program right here i put it in and everything like that the day that he he made officer he had to go to officer training school and he had to have another officer teach him how to put on his stuff because it was that quick. Right. Well, huh. he tells the story and everything. And he's what, what's really funny is, is Jocko didn't even know it. Jocko didn't even know he did that. He's like, I did a four year degree become an officer and you just signed some paperwork and you became an officer yeah that's pretty much how it happened what (laughs) he was like what yeah sometimes sometimes if i went to a meeting because they they didn't know what to do with me or anything like that and the reason why i had so much knowledge and everything i'd put like on major i i was a pretty much a big fuck up i'm like you you asshole you went in there with the skin of your teeth and just him talking about this stuff i'm like why didn't i do that 
that that worked right that, like what the fuck huh. so there is some credence to the phrase when you walk into a place just act like you're supposed to be there yes he basically yeah. did that and he he bullshitted his way into a commission <laughs> yeah he basically bullshitted his way into the commission that's 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 how <laughs> fucking that's outstanding yeah but i, I yeah. love i love his storytelling though yeah He's, i mean <clears throat> I mean, you've you've been in here, but you've been in my room. You, now you've seen that 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 original copy of the Stars and Stripes that I've got mm-hmm. hanging above my desk. Yeah. I mean, I love shit like that, and I've got that Bronze Eagle from World War II that belonged to a hundred first Airborne officer, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I love little shit like that. You know, I mean, it just you know you know I just recently uh, I was watching uh, Pawn Pawn Shop bullshit and Pawn Stars, yeah, Pawn Stars. Uh, Apparently, uh, Captain Cook, the actual captain that we use maps and everything for nowadays, he he, they had commissioned two thousand of these coin medallion type deals. Yeah, they're like seven to eight thousand dollars. Really? Yeah, but it, it was it's one of those things. It's like, oh, that was cool. Of course, he ended up trying to st- have. There's another fact that I learned that same moment is Captain Cook apparently tried to steal some uh, Hawaiian uh, uh, natives at the time, and that's how he died because they killed him. Yeah. So that was that was interesting. Um, ah, to be back in that time frame. Right. Jumping off further into our nerdum, um, I finally got around to starting season two of Star Trek Picard. How far did you get? Um, I finished the second episode last night, and I, I was going to start the third one, but I was like, "Man, I'm tired. I got to go to bed." And I'm I'm, I, I'm telling you right now, I'm kind of kind of somewhat disappointed, and and not to get you discouraged of the show or anything like that, and and I understand that. It's how Star Trek works. It's the reason why I don't watch too much Star Trek in the first place is because they go into like very high social uh defunctions and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Unlike, you know I, I I don't the only show that actually somewhat did that but was still entertaining to me was uh Babylon five. Yeah, and <laughs> we had didn't we discuss this a while back where like yeah um i i tried re-watching babylon 5 and i'm like i remember when that sh- when that show came out like the cgi that was involved on that show at the time was like state of the art and was like oh my god this looks so lifelike now when we watch it we're like the, the only the only Did thing they make that holds this on up. a nintendo 64 the only thing that holds up <laughs> The only thing that holds up from the '90s is Jurassic Park. Yeah, someone right. sold their fucking soul to make yeah, that Michael Crichton, movie. to be exact, sold his soul when he came up with the Jurassic Park idea. But, but I'm saying no, no, watching... no. I think the people that did the CGI sold their fucking. Oh yeah, soul. no, that CGI dude. Well, they had Amblin Entertainment working on that one, and so. I mean, that's Steven Spielberg all day long. So, because, I mean, Amblin Entertainment, that's Steven Spielberg's, you know, baby right there. Yeah. But. Which involved, uh, evolved into uh, DreamWorks. Yeah, it's, it, it, that's right. It evolved into DreamWorks. But I was sitting there watching Babylon 5, and I'm like, oh, my God. Did they, did, did they use, like, a Nintendo 64 graphics engine on this? What's really sad, though, <laughs> is the so show. Bad. The show I mean, that actually yeah. did a little bit better than that from that same time frame was Space Above and Beyond. Space Above and Beyond. Why does that one ring a bell? I know I've seen it. It was only for – it was a Fox show, so it only did like one season. Oh, you mean kind of like they fucked us out of a second season of Firefly? They yeah, they only gave us like yeah. half a season of fucking Firefly. Yeah, yeah. We're bitter about that still. Brown coats unite. I'm like a leaf on the wind. Um, I still want that shirt. I'm a leaf on the, and just has like a, uh, a, a, a red spot right there. Yes. Too soon. 
<laughs> too soon. Joel seen that one, and she was she was like, "That shirt actually fucking exists." That's too. Soon. She did the same thing. She was like, "Too soon." I was talking about Joel Stady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I remember because they were doing a comic convention uh, panel, mm-hmm. and Josh Whedon was asked if they got a green light for like a second season of Firefly. And they only allowed him to bring back one character. Who would it be? Now, uh, Alan Tydek is sitting right next to Josh, right? Mm-hmm. And he goes, without thinking, 100%, I'd bring back Wash. The the the, the, the auditorium, the, the, the hall, the... the the yeah, I have seen the video. Went absolutely fucking berserk, dude. And I mean, Alan Alan Tydek is over there going. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just puts his arms up, you know. But, but you know why why those two actually died, right? <sighs> I'm talking about the 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 priest and 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 Wash. Yeah. Well, I know. Well, in, in Serenity, I know that that the priest died on the planet. Yeah. After the uh, no, no, no. You know, you readers. know, and the real reason why they were written out, right? They died. Oh, please enlighten me. Because they weren't contractually obligated to do a second one. Everybody else was. If it actually hit, that's the only reason why. Because Alex Toda was actually doing other movies, and so was the guy that was playing the priest. He was actually doing some theater. <clears throat> and that's the whole reason why they so it was a contractual thing oh my that is so fucking lame hey, it, you, okay it happens so like, many that times. legitimately pisses me off knowing that now like i could have gone my entire life and been ignorantly blissful not knowing that and you have just come in like a miley cyrus syphilis infected wrecking ball and punched me right in the balls dude yeah that i mean i <sighs> I go in a like now. Not only when I rewatch Serenity will I be sad because those two characters have died, but I will be sad in an angry kind of I want to rip somebody's head off way. Well, they didn't know because... if they were going to be able to do a second film or not. The, the, those two actors, and definitely the priest now because well, the dead. only reason, yeah, as far as like the movie was concerned. Now I know that it took like a letter writing campaign from the fan base to get Serenity off the ground. Mm-hmm. Because after 14 episodes, what you like, like you said, a half a season, like what, a, what a hell of a way for a show to go out where a half ass thought out bounty hunters last line. And by all intents and purposes, the last line of the series was. Well, you know, like, oh, now he's just tumbling through space, you know, like, yeah, oh, well, it's like, that, uh... this is a problem. You know, it's like <sighs> I was like the TV series Chuck. Did you ever watch that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, uh, I think it was after the first season they were going to cancel it. You know what brought them back? The fans. Uh, yeah, it was the fans, but it was a buy. Okay. They were like, okay, we have to get a sponsor for this show. So they got – that's the reason why Subway was – you've seen a lot of Subway stuff because Subway was the sponsor. And the way that they sponsored it was people buying Subway sandwiches. They said, okay, if we have – if if people buy X amount of Subway sandwiches, we'll keep this show going. That's the whole reason why it's on. It, it had five seasons because of Subway sandwiches. Oh, I'm going to give you some viewing homework. See if you can find a show called The Legend of Bruce. Legend of Bruce? Yes. You can either find it on Amazon or uh, YouTube, probably. It was a web series back in the day. It had Felicia Day in it. Damn it. So the premise of this show. I think I've seen it. 
where the guy's sitting at home drunk playing the legend of zelda he thinks the fairy's hot so he starts choking himself out with the controller cord where he's jerking off and he passes out and wakes up in hyrule legend of bruce yeah on felicia day i have to do it this way oh you're gonna imdb it She's my celebrity crush. <laughs> I was so upset when I found out that she ended up getting married and everything. And has a kid. And has a kid. Still in the... Uh, yeah, she was my semi-quasi, like, you know, redhead, you know, obsession when she was doing the Guild. Never watched it. Oh, the guild was so funny, dude. I, it, it really I no, what got me was uh what was it? Uh oh, don't tell me it was science. Oh sing along. Yeah, with uh Neil Packer Harris, Josh Whedon made for like just oh, straight yeah, for video. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, hey, so I'm going to call Colin real quick. Okay. For the joke of the week. Can you hear the phone ringing? Yeah, I can hear the phone okay. ringing. Hey, bud. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Sorry. All right, so hold on. Let me give you, let me, let me, let me do your intro here. Hold on. All right, so. Here is your weekly, and I say weekly, installment of story time slash jokes by Colin. Brought to you by my genetic code. I can't. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead, start again. Why can't cats play poker in the jungle? There's too many cheetahs. What was that one that you says you said you were gonna tell? I don't remember. <sighs> Dang it. Is there another what? M- What's it called? Or again? no, the legend of Neil. That's what it is. I'm sorry. The legend of Neil? Yes. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um what was that joke? Can't I remember? Too many cheetahs. Uh your 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 joke about the ICU last week killed. It absolutely killed. No, it was yeah, it was. You sure? Anyways, it killed. Oh no, that was the week before. Um, I think I've seen this one. Oh, come on, come up with a really inappropriate one that I'll give you a free pass for, bud. Because guess what? This is sports show episode number fifty. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is the inappropriate joke by Colin. Here we go. What's long, hard? We'll no, see. you told that one already. No, but you told me not. You told that one already? No. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm putting my kid on the spot. Yeah. I'm such a parent. Look at me. You got one? You got one? Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. A female officer uh, arrests a drunk and she warns him, you have the the right to remain silent. Uh, Everything you say can and will will be uh, held against you. The drunk replies, boobs. (laughs) Did you hear him? Mm Mm-hmm. boobs (laughs) boobs <laughs> oh that's still i like the there's a tiktok there's a tiktok video to where he's like hey look at this he was like he wrote boobs and a window cleaner on that window yeah. spray cleaner and he wiped off the boo he's like ah <laughs> <laughs> all right bud <laughs> we'll work on your jokes for next week okay <laughs> All right, you get some sleep and have a good day tomorrow. I love you.
<laughs> later. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen that. I did. I have watched it. It came on my feed one time. Yeah. Um, it's like uh, her Dragon Age stuff. Yeah, but I love how she's like the very needy, very clingy fairy in the ne- Legend of Neil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love he goes into that first cave where he gets the sword, the, the wooden sword. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's like, what am I supposed to do with this thing? It's crap. And that wizard's like, fuck you. I worked hard on that. <laughs> like, ooh, ooh, ooh. but um, <laughs> do what? Salty. Salty, yeah. Um, I guess at the end know. of the episode. I mean, it was Man, a fun one. It was. 50, 50 was fun. 50 was 50 was fun so maybe 51 will be the new 30 i I don't know um i i I don't know exactly where i was going with that just humor me we've we've done 50 of these things it's so hard to be original every fucking week it is and good thing we do it like nerd stuff because i the two episodes that i'm like pretty much making up shit as we go along and you only have like one and yours is kind of easy because you really like sports. So you're keeping up with it. My stuff. I'm like, Oh man, I gotta do something like blah, 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 blah. Oh, so the, the, the new trailer for top gun Maverick came out today. I've seen that. That was actually, I'm still, I didn't even watch the original top gun. Yeah, it, I didn't watch the original Top Gun. You have not seen the original Top Gun? No. No, I haven't. It's weird. There's a the lot of movies that I just couldn't... fuck is your problem? There, There's movies I can't really... I don't know why, but I just can't... I, no, wait. I think I did now. I've only seen like clips you of You would remember the best recruiting tool the Navy had back in the 80s. It was the... The SEALs, I watched the Navy SEALs, though. That's the reason why a lot of we have a lot of Navy SEALs was because of that movie. No, I just, there's a lot of movies that uh, people, like, they tell me, it's like, oh, you're a movie buff guy, so have you seen this one? And I'm like, no, I, 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 I try to watch it, but I only got, like, like, Clockwork Orange, I can't fucking stand. Donnie Darko, can't stand. Watch Requiem for a Dream, and oh my god. That is a movie you show your kids so they know not to do drugs. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the... There was a... <sighs> there are some movies. Oh, Titanic's another one. I've never seen Titanic. Couldn't finish Gangs of New York. Anything with uh uh what what's his name? The guy from uh Last of the Mohicans. <sighs> He's in Gangs of New York too. Yeah, I think so. Um I can't I can't watch his movies. For a Daniel while Day I could Lewis? Yeah. I can't yeah. watch his movies. There, there, there's, there's a laundry list of movies that say there's like everybody's like, oh, it's so great and everything like that, and it's a criminally acclaimed, and I just can't stand them. Most movies that's been at the Oscars, I will probably never see. Most, I watched uh, Goodwill Hunting. That was actually a good one. Yeah, I love Goodwill Hunting. Um... But there's a lot of movies that was like. The Life of Pi, everybody was talking about. I tried to uh, finish up Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I couldn't do it. You know, I I, I suffered through that one. Um, I I say I suffered through it. I watched it specifically for the choreography in the wire fighting scenes. Um, the storyline was shit. But the fight scenes were cool. Um, 
You know, I mean, there was really, I mean, other than the scene where they were running through the top of the bamboo trees, the movie was pretty forgettable. Now, as far as the life of Pi is concerned, I got bored with the fucking trailer. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, eh. Maybe yeah, the it's tiger, one of maybe, those maybe the tiger will eat him. I don't know, but yeah, I didn't care to watch it. Um, I mean, there was a lot of movies that came out in that time period. I just didn't want to watch. I just had no, you know, I, and I know Forrest, catch hell Forrest for Gump. Forrest Gump was one of those movies that I didn't think I would love, but I I love that movie. Well, no, I went into Forrest Gump with the, you know, with the intention of seeing it for the historical fiction, right? And I wanted to see how the camera effects worked. You know, they they superimposed them in front of like different world leaders at the time. I Me, mean, it wasn't that. <clears throat> but I mean, you you knew. See, that was back when movie trailers didn't give away the the entire movie. You know, so yeah. I went was into one Forrest Gump. Is, I went into Forrest Gump with this very open mind, and I ended up walking out with like this. I want to see it again type of thing. I cried when the mother died. Oh, when mama died? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, that fucking, I, 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 that was the first movie you know, the I part remember. That got I me, my the, part, the part that got me was when Forrest found out that he had, he had a son. That too. And, and he was like, ah, is, that's... He, is he small? Or yes. Is he like me? You know, that part got me. I'm like, right there I teared up yeah. yeah dude i'm like you know i mean i halfway expected them to be like oh well he's gonna ditch out and then come to his senses later but no i mean forrest was just being forced at that moment and in forrest never ran away from anything in his life except when he was told to but you know and he ended up getting a medal of honor for it but i mean that movie just in itself you know i mean very rarely have I encountered a movie where I just absolutely fell in love of it with in love with it from the first from the first viewing on and it's just like i I watched that movie with a smile, yeah, well, the other movie that was incredibly acclaimed and it didn't do well in the box office, but I love the holy Al that was Shane shock redemption, oh yeah. No, Sh- God, Shawshank that was, Redemption. That was that was like, and it was it wasn't until you actually sat down and watched it and everything like that, and mm-hmm. it it was such a good movie. <sighs> that and, after that, I started watching a lot of uh, uh, Stephen King's like one of my uh, favorite movies. Stephen King movies, The Green Mile. Yeah, I was about to say that Green Mile, and there was another one with uh, Anthony Hopkins. I fucking forget what the hell the name of that movie was. Yeah, but, I can't remember. But, um, you know, I, I generally kind of shy away from the horror genre. Well, it wasn't horror. It was just. Well, a, no, I know, I know. But Stephen King. I mean, anytime Stephen King's name gets attached to something, the only reason why I watched either version of it. I didn't even bother watching chapter two when it came out because I just I just didn't care, um, you know. It just the way that the Stephen King movies were done, they were just so campy, so over the top. I'm not even really a huge Stephen King fan, and I know that's going to come as like a <gasps> a big gas moment for some people that listen to us. But hey, you know what? Fuck you. I'm entitled to my opinion, but you know I don't sit there and and. and bash you about your opinions i mean good god shut up and leave me alone um <laughs> you know i'm just kind of like man i just i don't really care for stephen king's work i mean i i wanted to see the dark tower when it came out it was the one that had matthew mcconaughey and I, I, uh, idris elba in it but yeah i didn't i didn't like go out of my way to go see it um when it was in the theater i definitely didn't go out of my way to see it uh when it came out on Digital. hearts of atlantis that's what it was Okay, yeah, now I know what you're talking about, but I mean eventually when I when when The Dark Tower comes out on Amazon or Netflix or something, I may I mean I'll check it out then. But 
I've heard enough about the movie itself that they were like, ah, oh, it's not really accurate to the books. And I mean, that book series was really great. You know, it really but, was. It was, you know, it was kind of like this like cool twist on a, on, on a gun, you know, on a Western, but, um, it wasn't that it was actually uh connecting of, of, of all well, of yeah, books, it, Stephen King's universe. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it kind of gave you that peephole into all the different areas, but I mean, it's kind of I like, a I, like I tried Call of Cthulhu to read, type deal. Yeah, I tried to read Misery when it came out, right? And I, I could not get through that book. I just the couldn't. only the only horror movie type book that I actually <laughs> I love how I said horror. Uh, the ho- like only cool hip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly like that, uh, but. Of Stephen King's horror books that I've only read, uh, it was a 1957 Chevy. Um, Christine. No, that was the name of the book. A 1957 Chevy. I uh, thought that was Christine. No, it, the whole the whole premise of this book is uh, these cops found this car abandoned car, uh, and so they didn't have have anything to do with it. So they put this uh 57 buick in a uh in, in the in the lot well it can't be damaged it's unbreakable and everything like that and every once in a while it, it was like a doorway to a parallel uh world mm-hmm. and the only reason why i read this book was I was in jail for for a week to pay tickets but i read this book and it was it was an interesting read. It was actually really good, really wit, uh, very uh, written. Mm. But it goes along of his uh, parallel universe uh, type stuff. Another book I read was the uh, the Sicilian, the the actual sequel to the Godfather, a right. prequel. It was a prequel to the Godfather. There's a movie coming out, or not a movie? It's a series. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's a Paramount Plus series. The order, no, yeah, the order, yeah, yeah, that looks interesting. Yeah, like I had they... no idea that the actual mafia was like going yeah. out of their way to try to keep this movie from being made. Well, what was it? Uh, I know one movie. I don't know what movie it was, but they were the. Uh, actually it was what was it analyze this or analyze that that robert de niro movie with uh billy crystal yeah um i think it was the second one where they had like uh uh contractors for the movie and everything and robert de niro's character was getting paid to make sure it was uh authentic oh yeah but it was yeah. it was there was a movie that was like that and they ended I think one of the actors like I think I legitimately saw someone get whacked. I'm not sure and I don't wanna know and those people are out of prison and everything. So <laughs> God <laughs> But I guess that's the end of the episode because Johnny's playing with the squeaky toy again. <laughs> if you can watch us on YouTube or Rumble. <laughs> God. Choking the chicken. <laughs> God, Johnny. <laughs> Anyways, angry. We have favorite. a rubber chicken now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, angry faithful. All as always, thank you for watching or listening. Uh, I'm David Ickerman. I'm Johnny Skelton. Keep it between the foul lines. And if you must cross over, do not step on the chalk. (laughs) All right, everybody. Talk to you later. Later.